Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the medical black book. Our today's topic is surgical infection. Surgical infection is basically of two types, major surgical site infection and minor wound infection. In the major surgical site infection, a wound that discharges pus either spontaneously or needs a secondary procedure to drain it. In a minor wound infection, this may discharge pus or infect serious fluid not associated with excessive discomfort. These are the pictures for major surgical site infection and this is for the minor one. Classification of surgical wound. It is basically classified into four types, clean, clean contaminated, contaminated and dirty. In the clean one, the infectious rate is about 1 to 2 percent. There is no inflammation, no break in the sterile technique and the wound primarily closed or not drained. The aerodigestive or genital urinary and biliary tracts are not entered. The potential infection rate is about 1 to 5 percent and the example for this are thyroidectomy, mastectomy and lipoma excision. In the clean contaminated wound, there is no inflammation but infection is present. Minor break in the sterile technique, aerodigestive or the genital urinary tract entered without spillage. The potential rate of infection is about 8 to 10 percent and the example for this is simple appendectomy, prostatectomy and cholecystectomy. In the contaminated wound, there is traumatic wound and acute inflammation is present. There is major break in sterile technique and the aerodigestive tract are also breached. The potential rate of infection is about 15 to 20 percent and the example for this is traumatic wound and cholecystectomy with bileaks. In the dirty or infected wound, the organism present at the surgical site and there is presence of pus and perforation is basically present. The potential infection rate is about 27 to 40 percent. Example for this is appendios, appendiceal abscess or peritonitis. Now, after a person has received a surgical wound, we need to assess that. We assess that by two, pro, two criteria, the Southampton criteria and asepsis criteria. This enables the surgical wound healing to be graded according to specific criteria, usually given a numerical value, thus providing more objective assessment of the wound. First, we'll discuss the Southampton criteria. It has five grades, and the grades are further divided into A, B, and C. In grade 0, there is normal healing. In grade 1, it's normal healing with mild bruising. In 1A, there is some bruising. B, considerable bruising. C, mild erythema. In grade 2, there is erythema with other signs of inflammation. In 2A, it is at one point. 2B, it is around the sutures. In C, it is along the wound. D, around the wound. In grade 3, it is clear homoseous discharge. In A point, this discharge is present at one point, only less than two centimeters. In grade three B, it is along the wound more than two centimeters. In grade three C, it is large volume. In grade three D, it is prolonged. The major complication starts after the fourth grade is reached. In this, the pus is basically present. This pus can be present at one point, less than two centimeters, or 4B, which indicates along the wound more than 2 cm, or 5th grade, which is either deep, severe wound infection without tissue breakdown. In the A sepsis, the A indicates additional treatment, which are granted 0 points. Antibiotic for wound infection, which are given 10 points. Drainage of pus under local anesthesia, 5 points. Deprivement of wound in general anesthesia, 10 points. S in A sepsis indicates serious discharge which is assessed daily and graded by 0 to 5 points. Erythema, also assessed daily, 0 to 5 points are given. Purulent exudate, 0 to 10 points. Separation of deep tissue, 0 to 10 points. Isolation of bacteria from wound, 10 points. Stay in patient for long over 14 days due to wound infection, 5 points. Then we will study an important topic which is systemic inflammatory response syndrome, also known as SIRS syndrome. It is an inflammatory state affecting the whole body. It is the body's response to infectious or non-infectious insult. It is a subset of cytokine storm in which there is a normal regulation of various cytokines. 
It can be elicited by multiple trauma, burn, pancreatitis, secondary peritonitis. SERS has is based upon four criteria. So if this is for for it, there is present of SERS. The first criteria is body's temperature. It can be either greater than 38 degrees centigrade or less than 36 degrees centigrade. The heart rate should be more than 90 beats per minute. In tachypnea, which indicates more than 20 breaths per minute, or carbon dioxide pressure of less than 32 mmHg, the white blood cell count should increase more than 12,000 mm3 or less than 4,000 mm3, or the presence of more than 10% of immature neutrophils. If all of these criteria have been met, SARS is present. If there are two criteria of SARS along with suspected infection, it is called a sepsis. In severe form of sepsis, there is end organ damage along with hypotension. Hypertension is indicated by blood pressure less than 90 mmHg and lactate level of more than 4 millimol. Whereas in severe or septic shock, there is severe sepsis with persistent hypotension hypotension and sign of end organ damage and the lactic level is more than 4 millimole. Now how will you treat a surgical infection? Basically, when you find one, you will send a tissue or pus for culture before antibiotic cover. And while this may take some time, so we immediately start on a bone and empirical therapy. Empirical therapy is when you see a wound and you likely think that this Antibiotics should be given. This is the um, out counter drugs. Then the wound should be best managed by delayed primary or secondary closure. The drugs which are commonly given or the antibiotics which are commonly given are penicillin. This works against Streptococcus clostridia and Streptococcus with, but without beta lactam. Fluvoxacillin is used in community acquired staphylococcal infection. Ampicillin or amoxicillin, which are given parenterally, are given to anterior bacteriaceae, E. facilis, and group D. strep. This are res the organisms that are resistant towards this drug is Klebsiella and Pseudomonas. Then we have Mislacillin or Eslacillin, which works on anterior bacteria Klebsiella and Pseudomonas. Whereas augmentin works on Klebsiella and Indiro E. coli. It is resistant, this drug is resistant towards pseudomonas, whereas the phallosporins affect the soft tissue infections, intra abdominal infections. These infections agents are S. aureus or anterior bacteria C. Whereas Cetazidine, which is one of this generation drugs, also works on S. aureus and P. arginosa. These drugs are resistant towards. Strep